it's time for another batch of minis. These ones arrived faster than any set that I've ever gotten. In fact, they showed up a few weeks before I even had time in my schedule to open the box. In the past, it's taken as long as like three months, but ordering this set to getting them in the mail is only about 10 days. Maybe they already had them in the US? Pre-shipped them somewhere or something? Uh, this is just me speculating. I don't know anything about shipping. As the uh, number one audience for $13 packs of little vinyl cats, I am always happy to see more. Additionally, I bought these alongside the last several sets after the first on my own. They were not sent to me. The overall quality of most of these guys, like physically in their printing, is pretty good. Aside from Cloudtail and Longtail, they're pretty much perfect. There's a few freckles, but otherwise, pretty good. The cats this time are Leafpool and Crowfeather, Cloudtail and Longtail, and then Spotted Leaf and Frostpaw. Leafpool has a dent, otherwise perfect. And the only problem that Crowfeather has is a barely noticeable color bleeding on a leg scar. They are both about as perfect as these minis get. Also, compared to any other mini set I've had, they were the hardest to get out of the plastic, both of them. If it weren't for the video Akira made of herself having lots of trouble actually managing to destroy that gray stripe figure, I would have been worried to even take them out of this without cutting it open. But these figures are ridiculously durable as uh, merch designed as collectibles. Design-wise, These guys are suffering from a few problems. The colors on both of them are perfect. Leafpool's colors are beautiful, especially the way her fur and eyes and stripes all kind of melt together, and crow feathers work fine. I don't really have a problem with the idea of these designs, but the shapes and the lines of their faces is really odd this time around. The most notable change is that every single figure has these nose lines. Last set, we got a really pretty Mothwing figure, and I didn't think twice about the two little cuts above her nose, I thought that they were just unique to that figure in particular. But now, on this set, five out of six of these new figures have those cuts, and they honestly look pretty terrible on most of them. And while, looking back, this is definitely an illusion problem on Mothwing 2, I wasn't really focused on it because she has uh, these big stripes going underneath her eyes that distract from it. But these nose lines, they make the face more cluttered on every single design they're on. The biggest problem, though, is the illusion. The illusion of Squidward's nose. A tiny version of Squidward's nose, but on every single cat that has these nose lines. Sometimes on cat line art that's supposed to be more realistic or is like a base for a later painting someone's gonna do, you see lines like this going up from the nose. But these are minis. They shouldn't have extra lines on them for no reason. No element of this thing should have lines on it for no reason. The lines are clutter. Scourge from set three, perfect. No notes. Leafpool has a few issues that aren't her Squidward nose though. And the first is that the corner of her eyes are really, really long, and her eyes, to compensate, are set really far apart, even though they start in the same place as the other minis. I mean, the, the corners of the eyes start in the same place as the other minis, but the eyes are farther apart, which stretches out the eye corner. Or maybe it was designed the other way around, where they put the eyes kind of far apart, but then they were like, gee, we need the eye corners to start way in the middle here, so they just made them massive? Sorry, this is the most frantic sounding mini review because I have no idea who saw these and gave them the thumbs up. Like, yeah, those look up to the same bar of quality as the older ones. Anyway, if Leafpool's eyes were this far apart and had normal length black corners, they would look a lot better. On top of this, her eyes are smaller than any other figures and they give the illusion of being even smaller than that thanks to how big the darks in the eyes are. For a good quick comparison, look at Leafpool next to Spotted Leaf. Both of them have kind of tiny eyes compared to the other figures, but Spotted Leaf doesn't look as bad largely because her eye corners are melting into the rest of her face. Another issue is that her cuteness is being diminished by how far her nose has been moved down from her eyes. A lot of the cutest figures that they make have noses that are very close to the eyes, and this one is dipping way down there. And if this was just a character design, if this is what Leafpool looked like in the Warrior Cats TV show, I'd be like, okay, that's Leafpool. But the intention of this is merchandise that you're selling to people who like the cat, and not just people who like the cat, little 
kids who like the cat, and little kids are a lot less lenient about just their favorite cat being ugly than adults are. And yes, if you saw a cat with the proportions of a warrior cat's mini in real life, you would be like, ah! But, you know, that's not the point here. We're not going by a real standard of beauty. We're not comparing these things to anything that exists in reality. We're just comparing them to their better-looking earlier selves. And Squidward tentacles from Spongebob Squarepants. And later, Easter Island heads. Oh, and Santa Claus. I negatively compare one of these cats to Santa Claus. Stay tuned. Oh geez, I'm not done with Leafpool yet. Leafpool also has some very distracting tangents and corners from the other corner of her eye, which is very, very strange looking. Her stripe keeps going over the top of her eye and turns into a sad eyebrow. And from there, the, the, the top of her, of her stripe comes up from the corner at the same time, creating like an X in the, in the vinyl cuts. And my final problem is a problem that all of these minis have, again, which is her eye highlights are placed in a way that makes her look unfocused. This is another problem most of this set's minis have, which is weird when characters from previous sets already had it pretty perfect. It was not broken and did not need fixing. Crowfeather I'm torn on because obviously he looks ridiculous. He looks funny as heck. His nose is super far from his eyes in a way that makes him look like he got stretched out in a cartoon and left like that. He looks like an Easter Island head. And it is so funny. Not to mention, the cuts on the bottom of his mouth have a tangent that makes it look like he's frowning super low. This figure is funny, and he's also not cute. And if I was a big fan of Crowfeather, I might be mildly upset that this is so uncute. But I'm not, so it's funny instead. It's as if the person who made these was so mad they had to design Crowfeather that they sabotaged him, or at least that's what I would say if another figure in this set didn't exist. Speaking of which, next up is Cloudtail and Longtail. They have the most manufacturing issues of my set, both have stretch marks on their seams that go around pretty much the entire figure, and they have the sharpest, most obvious seams. Both are recognizable enough, making Longtail a color point is allowed because we don't really have any decent design for him in the text, although we do have him colored in in the manga where he's just a pale grayish brown tabby. This design could take inspiration from his earlier black and white manga design, however, where he's drawn with uh, stripes only on his head, upper legs, and tail. Cloudtail is, um, Cloudtail, and can really only be Cloudtail by, uh, looking at him, but, oh god, what? What? I should get right into it. Cloudtail is a mess. He is so weird and bulbous that the box had to overlap him and Longtail to fit them both in. His head is incredibly large. His mouth is super big and wide on that head, but it still doesn't look proportional because the head is that big. He has those same unnecessary nose wrinkles that the rest of the figures have, which on him give him a bit of a Santa Claus can't find his reading glasses sort of look. The ball on his tail is thicker than his body, while his body itself is thinner than all of the other side-sitting figures. Turning him to his side reveals his flatness in a way that needs to be seen to understand, and his nose is shaped in such a way that it doesn't even look like a cat's nose anymore. His face is ugly. He has a mustache. I think that mustaches on Cloudtail are funny. I think beards on Cloudtail are funny. He has a beard too. I think that this is all fine. It's not pretty though. It's not desirable if I'm 11 years old. His eyes look unfocused thanks to the eye shines floating around in a weird spot and he doesn't really have any appealing facial features. Old, ugly Santa Claus. That's all I can think of and I hate him. Crowfeather is funny looking, really. I don't mind because it's silly, but with Cloudtail it's kind of crossed a line from silly into... How did they even reach this conclusion? The figure isn't cute, it's weird old man core, which I guess is perfect for the subsection of cat fans who think of Cloudtail as a weird old man, who shouts things and waves his cane around. That's how I treat Bramble Star, after all. I look at this Cloudtail figure and I think, I do not want this cat starting a fight with Lucy. 
Longtail, while he would be about average in other sets, is a massive breath of fresh air in this one. He's got normally sized eyes, a cute, well-proportioned nose that doesn't sit too low on his face and is big enough that it doesn't look strange, and is overall just way better proportioned facially than all of the others in the set. He is cute. He is good. His eye shines are a little weirdly placed, but we're ignoring it because the rest of him is good. There was an older beta version of this guy with blue eyes, but I'm really glad they changed it to green for the final because it looks better when he's already holding a blue collar. The only real problem is that unlike the older Ravenpaw figure, the item he's holding is glued down to his neck. I think this is because Ravenpaw's snake was like the one object on these things that you could just rip off, but it's a little sad to see. The only other minor nitpick about Longtail is that the buckle on the collar he's holding is colored weirdly, with the tone of the buckle being fabric colored and the tone of the fabric that would show through the bottom of the buckle being metal colored, but that is so, so tiny when this figure looks good and it's the best figure in the set. Genuinely, Longtail is great. The final set is Frostpaw and Spotted Leaf. Both are of okay print quality. My Spotted Leaf has a couple white freckles here and there, but is otherwise solid, and Frostpaw has some black freckles and a few jagged bits on her tail that resemble blue, but largely it's not even super noticeable. They do also both look like the characters fine. They definitely took some allowances on Spotted Leaf's weird various descriptions, but I'd much rather they do that than try to be accurate to them. Frostpaw being color point is basically all but canon too, so I'm letting that slide. Making a gray cat a color point to differentiate it is fine and acceptable, and making it a calico to differentiate it is coward stuff. I'd say that this Spotted Leaf is probably the second best figure in this set. Unfortunately, she still has a little bit of a nose issue. It doesn't look as bad as a lot of the other figures, especially seeing as it isn't like dipping down into anything like a lot of the other figures have, which definitely worsens the illusion, especially on Leaf Pool. I would probably think these little itty bitty noses on her and Frostpaw were cute if they weren't starting farther down than usual and including these genuinely ugly nose lines. I really like the shooting stars in Spotted Leaf's eyes, and I think that's cute, but I do wish her eyes were a bit bigger to compensate for them. Most of this set is, uh, relatively tiny eyes compared to older sets, which definitely hurts them. The white-tipped ears are cute, and I really like the back of her head, too. She looks like a little lynx from behind. But the thing stopping me from really liking this spotted leaf is her whisker pads. While no other figure in this set even has dots on their whisker pads, which I think is fantastic, away with dots, spotted leaf's whisker pads stick out. Like stubble. And they really do resemble stubble. From a distance, this is fine, and the contrast between the white and the black is excusable or even charming, but from any angle that isn't head on, it looks like she missed a spot shaving. And then we have Frostpaw. First question Why do cats know what a five pointed cartoon star looks like? Second question Did they really, really need to go with a five pointed star? Couldn't they have done something more like four, maybe? I do not like the way this leaf looks. I do not want to have this cat displayed when my mom comes over. Do you understand the misconceptions the five-pointed star leaf could create in a conversation with an elderly neighbor alone would stop me from allowing this design to happen on children's merchandise, but let's ignore the star because I can't say anything more on the Moon Kitty channel. Frostpaw has too many lines between and around her eyes. This is her biggest issue. In combination with her incorporating a dusty brownish gray, the line around her muzzle resembling bags around her eyes and wrinkles around her mouth, and then the lines coming up from her nose looking like even more wrinkles, she looks like she's intended as an old lady cat to match Cloudtail's old man cat, and not a one-year-old medicine cat apprentice. Along with this, her mouth is really big and long for how little her nose is, which gives her a bit of a sad dog mouth corners drooping down look. Additionally, like most of the figures in this set, her eye shines are unfocused. She has a unique pose for a figure, which I do appreciate, although the sides of her blobby arms are really funny looking. Not that I think there's anything wrong with the blobby arms, I just think they're funny. 
I'd probably be able to like her fine if either the lines up from her nose or the lines surrounding her mouth were removed. But as it stands, she's just cursed by having too much unnecessary detail on her. I really would have been excited for these choices in character, especially Frostpaw, but the truth is that these guys have worse design execution than older figures do. They don't have the clutter problem that the first set or two had with all the stripes and nonsense, but they definitely have a clutter problem in how many lines they have. These are unshaded 3D objects. They don't need lines to imply the shape of their nose. They have noses already. They are cute, and the more extra random detail you add, the less cute they're going to get. Additionally, I don't mind that Frostpaw and Leafpool have sad eyes, but I really, really wish that they had incorporated the lines that they're using to make their eyes sad into the greater design instead of just, you know, cutting a new line there. Because the cut line looks tacky. Crowfeather and Longtail both have half-closed eyes where they did not put a big long line that's connected to nothing on top of them to make that happen, and I think you could have done the same easily with either Frostpaw or Leafpool. These figures, seemingly, are supposed to be cute. Not Uncanny Valley realism chibis. Changes towards more realism are actively harming how good these figures look. Compare with the Warrior Cats plush, which are already too quote-unquote realistic in all of the worst ways. Granted, they're honestly pretty unrealistic because their eyes are tinier than a real cat's eyes and they have massively long mouth lines and look more like pit bulls than cats, but you know, it's unfair to compare the minis to them, but I really don't like that the minis seem to be heading in the same bad art direction as the plush are. Something I will say, all of these figures stand up well, even Cloudtail. The production quality is pretty good, besides Cloudtail, and all of these figures have chins, which is much better than Mableshade and Hawkfrost last time, who definitely did not have chins. In fact, I should give some of these figures the benefit of the doubt, because Frostpaw and Spotted Leaf and Leafpool and maybe even Crowfeather all look better than Mapleshade. Oh, and Longtail, obviously. I almost forgot that Longtail is part of this set because he looks so much better. Five of these figures have weird nose lines. I keep seeing them and seeing the Squidward nose instead of the cat nose. The nose lines look okay on maybe Crowfeather, but harm everybody else, making Leafpool especially have that effect going on the worst. Especially seeing as Leafpool's dips into an otherwise different color, making it look like it's hanging down over her muzzle. Horrifying. The reason a drawing would have lines like this is to show you where the definition of the nose is. These figures do not need that because their nose already sticks out from their face. All of these figures also have kind of weirdly placed eye shines that make their eyes look unfocused. While I want to like Cloudtail and Crowfeather having unique face sculpts, I can't because they both look kind of scary. If I was 11, and you took all of these and put them in an opaque bag and said I could pull out one and keep it, I would be really excited to take one, and then cry if I got Cloudtail. Meanwhile, if you say, did the same thing with all the old Beanie Baby cats, I would be happy with whichever one I ended up with, even though my favorite one was Chip, because they all look kind of baseline appealing. This is the perspective from which I'm seeing things like this. Cloudtail has value as a meme, as a joke, as saying, ha ha, look at Ugly Cloudtail, I love Ugly Cloudtail, stop making fun of Ugly Cloudtail, but he doesn't have value as a gift for a child. So this set of minis, I guess, is the first to actually disappoint me. If these are the only set that ends up being this ugly, it'll be great, and I won't even mind that these ones look bad. And hopefully they'll look at these when they're putting Cloudtail in their Coolaby company Easter baskets and go, hmm, maybe we should uh, not make the merchandise ugly on purpose, but I don't know what to hope for because I don't know how much they care what this stuff looks like if it just keeps selling. And it will keep selling. To me. Just me. And nobody else. As far as character choice, these are mostly expected. Three original series characters, two new prophecy characters, and the only surprising one being Frostpaw, who is from the latest series that is still coming out. This is a first, as no mini so far has been newer than Mapleshade. 
As of now, a majority of all the minis are from Series 1. That's 19 cats from the original series. That only leaves 11 that were introduced after. Five of them are introduced in the new Prophecy, Hawk Frost, Mothwing, Squirrel Flight, Leaf Pool, and Crowfeather. Three are introduced in the Power of Three, but two of those figures are both Jayfeather. It's Leaf Star and two Jayfeathers. Two are introduced in Arc 4, Omen of the Stars, that's Maple Shade and Ivy Pool. Yeah, Maple Shade comes from Night Whispers, so before Frostpaw, she was the newest possible character in all of the minis. And then just Frostpaw is from Arc 8. There are no cats from 5, 6, or 7. This is probably by design. They want to make figures of their most popular characters, and by default, the books people read the most of are from the first series. This is just how it goes. They're making money. They're here to make money. My hopes for the future are still on Dovewing, obviously, but I doubt Wing she's a popular enough character to be considered. Hollyleaf is definitely the most glaring character missing now that we've got Leafpool, seeing as Hollyleaf also has a plush, and uh, she's now alone in having a plush but no mini. Also, if I were to like go through the most popular Warrior Cats characters, Hollyleaf would probably be pretty up there. If reenacting the first arc with minis, which <laughs> seems to be a running theme with this, I think the weirdest ones missing would be Whitestorm and Dust Pelt right now, and then maybe Silver Strain, Stone Fur, Leopard Star, but I don't really know who the market for the Silver Strain mini is. Unless this was like 2008, in which case there was a massive market for it, they really missed their chance. Can you imagine the making of One Star mini? How are they gonna do the whisker? I'd buy it. I mean, obviously I'd buy any mini, but like, I'd buy it. As far as just sheer fandom popularity goes, after Hollyleaf, who again feels very, very glaringly missing, Tallstar feels like he would be an obvious choice. Characters like Breezepelt, Soul, Snowfur, Swiftpaw, Brackenfur, and Bristlefrost all have fans hanging around here and there too. And even though they're not as popular, as this series goes and includes minor cats like Mudclaw and Darktail, whose fandoms are very, very minor, cats like Bramblestar and Lionblaze are definitely starting to feel missing despite their lack of popularity. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if they were like, here's Rusty Firestar, side pose, with collar on, and other such gimmicks to pad out sets with already used popular characters. But there are so many of these cats, even among plot-relevant characters, they legitimately would never run out. And I guess I wonder on some level if the production of less popular characters with these things is even a detriment. The fictional, hypothetical character that I've come up with to explain why Misty Star shows up so much on the Warrior Cats website, Misty Star's George, made a whole bunch of Misty Star themed merchandise early on. There was a Misty Star keychain, a Misty Star mini plush head, and when Kula Bee was like going to book conventions and stuff, they were giving out buttons that had a Misty Star on them that said Misty Star. But I guess I wonder how much those Misty Star items sold, because Misty Star is pretty much the definition of not a very popular character. So if an unpopular cat like Misty Star can sell well enough that they can keep making Misty Star stuff for a little while, even like being convinced somehow to put Misty Star on their character pole, I don't see why we can't have a little bit of Dovewing Mini little bit of Dovewing Mini around here. She'll go out of print, they'll never restock her, but I will have her and that's what matters. Anyway, that's my unnecessarily long minis review. I got mad about Squidward noses. Goodbye forever, everyone.